You're listening to the PRO Media Network, the next level in entertainment. Pelicans, you're now listening to the Pelican Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network. I'm Big Q chiming in on podcast 278 on the Pelican Post Game Report. And we're going to be recapping the Pelicans games. Let me tell you something, man. I done watched a lot of bad basketball in part my French, Portuguese, and Spanish. I done watched a lot of sh- basketball, but I got to tell you the Pelicans take the cake they are taking the cake the table that the cake is sitting on the spoons the knives that used to cut the cake and everything that the people will regurgitate because the cake is nasty anyway i had to get vulgar but i'd like to give you all a round of applause for joining us today on the pelican post game report on the pro media network and how can i come to you and tell you all of the great news that is coming out of the pelican camp well guess what There isn't any unless, in my humble opinion, that a change comes from on high. And I mean way on high. On how high is just below Dale Demps and his special assistant, Danny Ferry, who's been doing a pretty good job. You know, I'm not uh, a guy that's tied to to the Pelicans organization. I prefer it that way because it'll give me the opportunity to present to you unbiased, unfiltered commentary without having to worry about my check getting cut or me being transferred because I'm blasting this organization. So I feel good about that. And so and you, you should, too, because at least that way you get unfiltered uh, commentary. And there's no one talking like the Pelican post game report. I'm going to just tell you the truth. There's no one talking and telling you really what happened. I watched a couple of the post games and I was hearing all this stuff about what they were doing wrong. And I was like, that is not totally the issue. It was like they were beating around the bush. Ain't no beating around the bush on the Pelican post game report. The, the truth of the matter is the Pelicans have been absolutely awful. And it's not just because of the player personnel. I have to give a lot of blame to the head coach. And this team is a direct reflection of the head coach, Elvin Gentry. Now, don't get me wrong. Elvin Gentry did very well his first year last year. But remember, prior to that, had two soul-sucking garbage can years with Elvin Gentry. And then he had one year. Then they say, okay, well, Elvin Gentry, uh, we're going to extend you out two years based on one year of success Prior to that, he stunk, and they blamed it on injuries, what have you. But all teams have injuries. That's not an excuse. Shouldn't be an excuse. But beyond that, this team is not – they're they are, they're totally inconsistent. And they're inconsistent because they have not totally mastered the style that Gentry is trying to put them to do. They're tur- the thing about it is the Pelicans – or defeating themselves. It's not like the Celtics, the Wizards, the Knicks, or the 76ers are doing anything that far advanced that's just stopping them. They're defeating themselves in this game. They're trying to push the pace and not discipline enough to not turn the ball over. And I'm saying these are not turnovers that are forced turnovers. These are turnovers by the guy leaping in the air and blindly throwing the ball to the cross the court, thinking that the player is supposed to be there and it goes out of bounds. This is guys not watching where they're throwing the ball. This is guys moving too fast and the pace is too fast for them where they're just turning the ball over. This are guys that are playing a fast pace and not getting enough rest. Elvin Gentry wants to run these guys up and down the floor and tire them out and only run eight a player rotations, five starters, three guys off the bench. That's totally stupid. And I've been saying that, and that's why you see the inconsistencies, because they're tired. They're tired. You can't tell me. I got good sense here. You can't come in here and tell me that the best way the Pelicans can win games and be a championship team is that Anthony Davis plays center the entire damn year. Now, on the Pelican post game report, we covered this when Elvin Gentry and the rest of the crew signed Julius Randle. Andy Davis was on the press conference. He said, 
I guess I'm going to have to be playing center. So hold on. I guess I'll be at this playing center. That means Gentry didn't have that conversation before they signed Julius Randle, letting him know, AD, we're going to convert you to a center. What you're going to get is Anthony Davis ran the hell off. Anthony Davis is not a center. He, they should not always 100% of the goddamn time be playing in the small ball rotation every damn game. I can understand. Sometimes you play small ball rotation, but the guy got tunnel vision. You can't march a small ball lineup in Anthony Davis at center against every goddamn team. He is not a center. Get a goddamn center. Go get a center. If you got to trade for Dwayne Dedman, you got to go sign Joakim Noah. Go find somebody to play the five. There are plenty of seven footers that can play the five and run the court. Allow Anthony Davis to be what he is a stretch four with awesome perimeter game. Allow that five to just be offensive rebound in defense. That's what the hell you need. Why do we have Jaleel Okafor and he just sits on the bench night after night? I just don't understand and that's the truth of the matter in this Pelican Post game report. But anyway, we in this episode, I'm going to be recapping the Wizards game here. Of course, DC recapped the last four games or three or four games, whatever the hell they are. He's recapping those matchups, but as far as but as far as as far as the Wizards matchup, excuse me, the Celtics matchup, that's, I apologize for that. The Celtics, the Wizards are the upcoming matchup. We're going to recap the Celtics matchup and preview the Wizards matchup in this particular show. Now, like I said, I say all that to come around and say they lose. That's the fourth in a row. So you win a few, you lose a, don't lose a bunch. You win a few, then lose a bunch. Totally inconsistent, totally crazy, totally botched, totally, uh, it, it's just, absolutely insanity and if we look at this game it's the same thing you hear them saying well they got to play harder they got to lay up the ball harder that's what i heard some of the analysts saying i'm like are you kidding me nobody's not going to say okay elvin gentry need to slow the pace because they're not disciplined enough to play that pace for consistently throughout the season you're not playing enough guys off the bench to help out if some guys are struggling put some other guys in take some other guys out but a lot of this is happening because these guys are fatigued when they when you see guys turning the ball over like that you know that's discipline and then later on in the game is fatigue look at this the stats in this game to fortify my points the pelicans turned the ball over 22 times against the boston celtics that's totally risk that's just that's just ridiculous they turned the ball over so much you know the the boston celtics had to turn around and say hey look man my, my bad you turned the ball over they was giving them pity points 22 turnovers 32 points off of 22 turnovers by the Pelicans. Now, the, the Celtics turned up over 15 times, only gave up 16 points. Pelicans gave up 32 points off of 22 turnovers. And you want me to go further about the statistics and stats in this game? Then Now, what they did do is what I've been saying for a long time. They did shoot a really good percentage from the free throw line. 22, 27 of 29 for 93%. That's where it needs to be. They're getting opportunities to go to the line. The referees are not freezing them out this time around. They did a good job on the on the boards, forty eight to forty seven. They had twenty uh, Celtics out assisted them twenty seven to twenty one. Celtics had more steals, of course, fourteen to eight. But in the end, this is the thing: the Pelicans lose the point in the paint battle, forty two to thirty four. It's 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 a culmination of different things that's really making the Pelicans really suck. But anyway, you're going to hear Al Gentry say, well, we just got to play discipline. We can't turn the ball over 22 times for 32 uh, turnovers. I'm going to play him in just a second. He's probably going to he's going to mimic exactly what I'm saying, because I know Al Gentry. I heard enough of Al Gentry's uh, interviews over the last several years to understand exactly what El Gentry is going to bring. He's not going to tell you I need to make adjustments. I need to change my roster and my lineup, move Etwine bench, I mean Etwine more to the bench so I can have more scoring off the bench because they showed you the stat during the game that the Pelicans have one of the worst scoring benches in the league. Their defense sucks and they turn the ball over. Those three terrible things will get you a 10 and 11 record and an up and down, up and down, up and down season. What ultimately will end up pissing Anthony Davis off. The best Best position for Andy Davis is play at four. He is not a center. I repeat, he is not a center. Pelican post game report question of the day. Is Anthony Davis a center? Please answer that question in the comment section. And I hear you guys are going to say, well, Q, he can play center some games. But did you anticipate him playing center for 82 goddamn games? 82 games? Seriously? 82 games? And you're going to tell me 
uh, bug eyed L Gentry is going to look at you and tell you the best opportunity we have to success is to play Andy Davis at center for 82 games. You're going to let them sell you that? But anyway, let's listen to Elvin Gentry and we're going to get back into these individual statistics. I'm going to listen to Elvin Gentry tell you about why his team, the team built in his image and likeness, the New Orleans Pelicans, are so terrible right now. Here's Coach Gentry. Um, well, it started with turnovers, yeah, but, uh, you know, we. Uh, we gave up too many uncontested threes, and this team is a, a great three-point shooting team anyway. So uh, their bigs can shoot them, their perimeter guys can shoot them, uh, and every time we got it within a workable distance, uh, it was either a turnover or uh, you know they they made a three. So plus, I mean, you, you, you can't. There's three stats that stand out. Number one, our turnovers. They got 32 points on second chance points. They get 18. Fast break points, they get 18. They're not a running team. You know, their, their pace is one of the slowest in the league. So, you know, you give up 68 points. That's more than half of their points uh, on those three stats right there. So if you do that, you're going to have a tough time winning. And you got the case of the uh, Just the, the turnovers, are they a product of – carelessness with the ball they probably have guys trying to make plays that are too difficult where do you kind of pinpoint no I didn't think it, I, I thought the turnovers we had tonight was really simplistic plays that we just didn't make you know so I, I don't think we were trying to do anything uh, really difficult or hard you know they just played the passing lanes and we uh, we we made some tough decisions some bad decisions I mean, energy and effort is something hard to quantify, but when you give up the number of offensive rebounds that you did tonight and they were able to get into the lane on a few occasions, how did, what's the reaction to just the, the effort there? No, I, I, I thought we played hard, you know. I, I did. And, you know, I don't think 14 offensive rebounds are an exorbitant amount, you know. Uh, some of them came early on in the game. Uh, but like I said, I don't think you can have 30, uh, 32 points off turnovers. To me, that's the biggest concern that I have. And then obviously, uh, you know, the turnovers that we had, they forced us out of some of the things that we wanted to do. You know, they blew up a bunch of the dribble handoffs that we usually do. And uh, uh, as I said, you know, we, we were in a position where we had to pull in and help. And that goes back to being able to, you know, guard the basketball and, and, and direct the basketball, and we weren't able to do that. And so we were always in a help situation, and they're really, really good at finding open guys when you're in help situations. That was Coach L. Gentry chiming in with his thoughts on the Pelican. Sad and this terrible play. I mean, you want to watch some really pathetic basketball, some really shitty, excuse my language, basketball. Only one where I can just explain a play. It's just shitty and pathetic. Sad, pathetic, shitty play. You want to watch some really bad basketball and learn how not to play basketball? Turn on the Pelicans and watch them night after night like we do and see what you get. I mean, totally dis disarray, just just dis dysfunction all over the place. And then you got a coach yelling from the sideline, play faster. So, yeah, make more mistakes, but make them at a faster pace. This team, you need a roster change. You definitely are. And, and they're talking about these crazy writers talking about we need to trade for a point guard. DC brought that to my attention. I said trade for a point guard. What do you talk? Trade for a point guard? The point guard is not the issue for the Pelicans. It's not. Now, of course, Alfred Payton in a starting lineup will bring defense and he could penetrate and do it. He would definitely help. But the Pelicans can win games or should be able to win games without Alfred Payton. I mean, I know you. I know you're gonna agree with me on that. Also, as far as Anthony Davis go, the Pelicans have enough personnel to win games without Anthony Davis. That's my thinking. My thinking. Outside of that, the point guard situation is not the problem. The problem is the Pelicans are getting beat. They're turning the ball over at record pace, and I mean the defenses are not coming and locking them down and making them doing anything. That's them turning the ball over because they're undisciplined. They have not totally mastered the system, but you will see games where the Pelicans will have success because they're in rhythm and games when they're not. You can't run them in the ground at this record-setting pace. I think they're second in the, in the league in points scored. The pace is high, but the the drawback or the side effect of playing that fast is look all of the turnovers. They're in the bottom five in turnovers. They're in the bottom five in defense. You know, they're not a great free throw shooter when they get to the line. They've lost games because of their poor free throw shooting. Like if you have games when you're not shooting the ball well, 
the best, you know, you're not making lips, but you're getting fouled. You can get extra 10 to 15 points at the line to win some of these close games when you lose by two or three points. Remember, uh, case in point, D.C. covered it. Remember the, a, a couple of games ago when Anthony Davis was matched up, he had to hit that free throw to tie the game, descended in overtime. He had three field free throws to make. He missed the last free throw, actually two free throws. He missed a free throw and they ended up losing the game. Let's flash back again recently. Drew Holiday was at the line again. He had an opportunity to tie the game, push to actually go ahead in the game. What did Drew Holiday do? He goes to the line and missed the free throw. What I'm saying is Drew Holiday and Anthony Davis are terrific, terrific players, and without them, we don't have a team. But what I'm saying is a good coach knows that his team could win a lot of these close matchups when – the team struggle free throw drills instead of talk about running up and down the court and doing all the silliness how about free throw drills and getting back to the bases gentry how about shifting up your lineup how about moving each one more to the bench putting uh, frank jackson in to, to, to kind of speed up the pace and more athleticism to the lineup and move drew holiday back to the two position how about that how about always trying to force fade each one more into the starting lineup when he'll do better off the bench that's what he was supposed to be anyway He'll do so much better off the bench. But you won't see that. You know why? Because he got tunnel vision. He's too close to the pitcher. But that's all right. We'll come back and we'll finish up talking about the Boston Celtics and the Pelicans matchup on the other side of the break. And we also will get into some more talking about the preview of this upcoming matchup they have against the against the upcoming team they got. We'll talk about it all on the side of the break. You're listening to the Pelican Post Game Report. Stick with us. Forget ESPN or Fox. Get straight sports talk from the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. Sports fans are gearing up and saving big at Fanatics.com, the world's largest collection of officially licensed fan gear. From all the leagues, teams, and players you love, unique one-of-a-kind designs exclusively by Fanatics, and autographed collectibles from today's biggest stars ship directly to your home. Join Fanatics Rewards for free to earn fan cash on every purchase. Shop now and for a limited time, get 20% off all orders. Fanatics.com, officially licensed everything. Do you need a domain name? How about a host for your website that can work with WordPress? Try Namecheap.com. They make registering, hosting, and managing domain names for yourself or others easy and affordable because of the internet needs people. Namecheap is an ICANN accredited domain register and technology company founded in 2000. It's one of the fastest growing American companies according to the 2018 Inc. 5000. Celebrate nearly two decades of providing unparalleled levels of service, security, and support. Namecheap has been steadfast and customer satisfaction with over 10 million domains under management. Namecheap is among the top domain registers and web providers in the world. They offer a full selection of popular and unique domains along with fully featured hosting packages, SSL security certificates, who is guard privacy protections, and more, all at the lowest prices in the industry. So if you need a domain name or hosting or anything else, think Namecheap.com. That's right, Namecheap.com. Check the description section below for link. What's up, sports world? The PRO Media Network is on a mission to reach 10,000 subscribers. So besides our regular programs like the Sports Coma with Big Q and the Guys, the Pelican Post Game Report, Rapid Fire TSC, and others, we will be expanding out and offering other content like movie, anime, and gaming reviews for your entertainment. So if you enjoy our content, please donate at our Patreon page. Also subscribe, comment, and share. And help the PRO Media Network reach 10,000 subs. Peace. Get all the latest news and updates from your New Orleans Pelicans at the Pelicans Eye The new and official Pelicans Daily Journal. Covering everything Pelicans. Attention everyone. Get, get breakdown on games, free agent signings, and potential moves. Unbiased opinions and straight up facts. With statistical analysis from G-Bound. Go to www.thesportsdaily.com forward slash pelicans dash I dash view. You're listening to the Pelicans Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network for all things Pelicans. For all things Pelicans, you're now listening to the Pelican Post Game Report. I'm Big Q. 
And this is the PRO Media Network. We're bringing it to you live here. We recap the Pelicans. Of course, they're 124 to 107. Disgusting loss at home. We're supposed to be good at home, by the way. Eight and two at home. At the time, it was one of the best home records here because whatever we doing on a, uh, on the road is not working. But at home, we had a little, a little comfort. But not when the Celtics come into your house, slap you, push you down, and eat all the food out your refrigerator and any other disrespectful thing that a person can do. That come into your home, that disrespect you. Maybe they take a dump in your toilet and don't flush it. Whatever the case may be, leave a you leave the, the 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 tub overflowing. I mean, the run the, the water running in the tub and it flows over into your bathroom and you gotta clean all that water up and they just leave. That's whatever disrespectful thing you come up with. <laughs> or maybe they come to your house and they got an oil leak and they park in your gar- your, your driveway and leak a bunch of oil in your driveway. Then leave. Whatever it is, man, kick your dog. They did it to the to the Pelicans. That's what they pretty much they did. Let's look at some of the individual statistics from this matchup. Andy Davis finished the game, twenty seven points. He had twelve, actually sixteen rebounds and five assists. He does what he does best. He had three steals, even three blocks in a game. What more can you ask for? From this man. What more can you ask for? In 37 minutes, he was 8 of 19, or of 2 from downtown, but 11 of 12 from the free throw line. Big up Stanley Davis, by the way. 25 points for Nikolai Miritich in 37 minutes, 8 of 15 from the field, 6 of 11 from downtown. He had five rebounds in the game. Everybody else, not so hot. The third scorer, of course, was Julius Randle. He had 15 points and five rebounds in 21 minutes off the bench. And then Drew Holiday, he kind of struggled in this one. Only 13 points, but his defense was there. 13 points, seven assists, three steals, four rebounds. Actually, six rebounds for Drew on four of eight, shooting one of two from downtown, four of four from the line in 37 minutes. And, of course, 11 points from Darius Miller off the bench in 30 minutes. Darius is getting starter minutes off the bench, by the way. That's way, by the way, I just think that's way too many minutes to be playing Darius. I mean, that's like stealing minutes away from, that's like to me, 15 to 16 more minutes that he's taken from a guy like Sheik Diallo who can really bring that energy and effort to the team. Frank Jackson played six minutes in this game, didn't score a point. But you playing Darius Miller 30 minutes and then you had the nerve, the un, like Stephen A. Smith say, the unmitigated goal to bring Solomon Hill off the bench who hadn't played in, a, in, in several games and give him 20 minutes. And you know how, what Solomon Hill rewards him with? Two points and four rebounds in the game. Great call on that one, Coach Gentry. So you can bring Solomon Hill, who obviously trade bait. Don't play Frank Jackson. Don't play Jaleel Okafor. And they did play Sheik Diallo two minutes. Great reserve play, coach. We, we can see why your bench is one of the worst in the league. And it's because you're not playing anybody because you don't believe in going beyond eight to possibly nine players unless somebody get hurt. We can't utilize our full bench like a good coach would to keep players fresh, especially when you're demanding them to run this stupid pace that you got set in your mind. You know, let, by the way, let me give you a little backdrop on this style of play that Elvin Gentry is trying to push the Pelicans to do. He's getting this idea from the Showtime Lakers of the 80s. But the only problem is with that is they were a very good defensive team. They had a legitimate presence in the in the in the post that made teams shift their You know, they made it difficult for them to score. They could run. They could shoot. I'm not saying the Pelicans can't. But nobody's scared of the Pelicans down low, especially if Anthony Davis is not hovering around there. And even and I've seen games where they've actually been attacking Anthony Davis. So I was like, wow, that's really interesting. But that's just what's been going on here. Anyway, look at some more of the statistics here. Sheik Diallo, two minutes, like I said, no points. Etwine Moore, 26 minutes, two of seven from the field, one of three from downtown. The guy had five points, excuse me, five points in the game for Etwine Moore. And I, like I said, we need to switch this up here. We need to do something a little different. Wesley Johnson is a talent. He has seven points in the game, but with 17 minutes. So you start him, but that's not starting minutes. 17 minutes is the minutes that Darius Miller should have got. Wesley Johnson should have got 26, 27 minutes, and they should flip-flop those. Darius Miller is no rhyme or reason why Darius Miller should be playing 30 starter minutes, playing 30 minutes a game, and then you got him in there crunch time trying to play defense when Wesley Johnson's sitting on the bench. He's a way better defender than Darius Miller. It's just, it's just like the madness, the insanity of this here thing. But anyway, looking at the Celtics stack, they just shot the Pelicans 
into a hole. 26 points for Kyrie Irving on 10 assists. He had a really nice night. And they were so good. They were knocking shots down in the contested shots in the Pelicans' face. You know, confident like Roz, how dare you try to block my shot? The guy right raises up Terry Roseola, just knocking shots down with the Pelicans defenders hands in their face. Nothing you can do about that. They had an outstanding game. They shot 19 of 39 for 48 percent. You might as well say 49 percent because it was like 48.7, something like that. But 49 percent, you're not going to beat anybody when they shoot 49 percent from the three point line and you have 22 turnovers giving them 32 points while they blasting your guts out with uh, 19 three-pointers. But anyway, let's get away from that sadness of a game and move to possibly what could be more enlightening play perhaps from the Pelicans. Perhaps the Celtics did the Pelicans a favor by just totally slapping their mama and just pushing their house and burning their house down. Maybe they did them a favor because they were embarrassed. It, it was, I felt bad. I seen the looks on their faces. They were demoralized. It was, it was a shame. But sometimes we have to go through these periods so we, we move forward and then get better. I'm hoping this might be one of those slap you, slap you in the face moments to wake you up. I don't know. But what the Wizards did to them a few games ago when they beat them by 10 uh, in their building, could we possibly anticipate that the Pelicans could rise above it all and get a win against the Wizards? Now, bear in mind that the Wizards, since the matchup with the Pelicans, have been playing a hell of a lot better. They've actually gained confidence. Prior to the matchup that they had a few games ago with the Pelicans, they had they had a fire sale going out there in Washington. John Wall, Bradley Beal, Otto Porter, everybody, everybody was up for trade. All of a sudden, they play the Pelicans, they get well. They're happy. Now everything is flowing nice and smooth, and the Wizards are actually doing pretty good. You know, they've actually got well. The Pelicans, you know, they should send them a Christmas card or a holiday card to let them know that we appreciate y'all for helping us feel better because the last 10 games, they've won six of 10 and they've done a lot better, meaning they're even on a two game winning streak against this team. They're not scared. They're going to come into this ring. They see what Boston did uh, to the Pelicans. They're going to try to do what they can do the same way. Good news is Dwight Howard, who has been struggling, he's out of this game. We do get Anthony Davis uh, back. He had a little injury. He's coming back. But we can't let Otto Porter do what he did. He had 27-something points against the Pelicans in the first matchup. Bradley Beal was doing his thing. John Wall was doing his thing some kind of way we got to stop them from advancing the ball we can't give them walk-up layups i mean these guys are getting walk-up layups reverse layups pelicans leaving the paint wide open the back door wide open it's a it's it's everything it's no security what's where the security at to protect the house there's no security whatsoever we can't allow teams to do that to us we can't we can't constantly play behind 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 every game we cannot allow that to happen anyway looking into the game the statistics between them the wizards come back the eight and 12 and two and seven away but like i mentioned they're on the two-game winning streak the pelicans of course are falling through the flow once again they're on the losing streak this time it's four in a row can't say to use the excuse of the road they're getting blasted in their own building so we got to figure that out the top scores for the pelicans andy davis 27 a game shooting about four 48.6 uh, from the field. Good numbers. He also is the top rebound on the team with 13 a game. And then of Drew Holiday having a spectacular season. That's the top assist. I think Drew is the second highest assist guy in the NBA. Pretty good numbers for Drew Holiday to be that he's playing an off guard role and he's having a terrific season all, all over the place. So hopefully Drew Holiday this year, if he can keep up this pace of play, he could be represented and get his second all star because he, he, damn, he damn sure deserves it. They give it to him. But Anyway, let's look at some of the team statistics between these two teams. Washington averaging about 113 a game, but giving up 118 a game. That's why they yeah, that explains the losing record. But the Pelicans, they're giving they winning games. They're 118.2, but giving up 117.6, and that puts you right in the middle of the pack, which is right where they are. They're shooting uh, 47 and a half percent. The Pelicans are from the field versus 46 flat for the Washington Wizards. Pelicans averaging about 48 rebounds a game, 41 for the Wizards. Pelicans about 27 assists a game. Wizards at 24. Pelicans about six blocks a game. Wicks, the Wizards at six and a half. Eight and a half re, uh, steals a game for the Wizards. Five, almost might as well say about a seven for the Pelicans. And of course, like I said, Wizards on a two game winning streak, six and four of the last 10. Pelicans on a four game slide five and five of the last 10 
500 ball for the Pelicans. It's going to be a tough, tough, tough go at it. But the thing is this, these, this, the, the, the Pelicans have, it's been kind of weird because you expect the Pelicans to struggle in this game. But after what Boston did to them, the depressing, sad display of basketball that they put on against the, the, the Boston Celtics, I can't, uh, I have to turn around and say, you know what? I have to give it to the Pelicans on you. Got to give it to the Pelicans, right? You got to, right? Got to give it to the Pelicans because sooner or later, if they don't, if they lose this matchup, people are gonna start calling for L. Jeffrey. I mean, I mean, y'all tell me. That should be the quote, the question of the day. How many games do they have to keep losing before somebody calls for L. Gentry's job? I mean, look what happened to Tyron Lue in Cleveland. What far less, you know? It wasn't that dire of a situation, but they took his job away. You know, so I'm saying Elvin Gentry is not untouchable. But when do we start calling for this? for his job, for these ridiculous games, them losing. He's saying, well, it's early in the season, all this kind of stuff. If they don't do anything now, they can end up losing control of the season. They really could because you got things happening and things turning over. I mean, you can't not go back to this. You can't tell me that your best chance of winning games is to play Anthony Davis, who is not a center. He could play the center. But that is not his position. You can't tell me you're going to put Andy Davis up against Rudy Gobert. You can't tell me that it's smart to put him up against Steven Adams. You can't tell me that it's smart to put him up against these big centers who don't have all those skills, but they're good at beating you up. Just, they, you can't tell me that's smart. You can't tell me there's a better way to, to make this team win beyond using him as a center so you can play small every night. Then when you go to the bench, you have you don't use none of the depth of the bench. You don't even play your only seven footer who can re- really get you. And the guy's a pretty good offensive. Now, you can say his defense might be whatever. But Jaleel Okafor is a top five former pick three, four years ago. He can give you points off the bench. And he's a legitimate seven footer. I don't know what this guy problem is with length. I, I just don't get it. But playing small is his idea. He stole it from the Lakers. But you got pieces missing here. They had a solid bench. You got to dip into your bench. Go four or five players deep into the bench. You can't run these guys in the into the ground like this. This is unfair. You can't run them into the ground and then expect them, oh, well, we got to do this, that, and the third. You can't. You have to play the guys off the bench. Frank Jackson, why did you draft them if you're not going to play them? This is the time when you need to start playing them. Jaleel Okafor, why did you sign him if you're not going? You're just going to just let him sit on the bench all the time. Sheik Diallo, he gets in there, he makes things happen. Why is he not playing minutes? Why is Darius Miller and Solomon Hill, of all people, played 20 minutes? Who He was on the end of the bench. You had uh, a Curlin Williams or whatever playing minutes before Solomon Hill was playing. But you reach past Sheik Diallo, Jaleel Okafor, and go grab a throwaway like Solomon Hill and place him for 20 minutes. And he only give you two points, and he was in there turning the ball over. It's just it's the, it's getting to the point where I'm starting to see he, his vision is not worth it. I'm I, that's you know what? Let's get a Pelican post game report. Quick. I got multiple questions for y'all. I want to ask y'all, what do y'all think about L Gentry? Do you think L Gentry is the right coach for this team? Do you think L Gentry can win you a championship as a head coach? He ain't done it nowhere else. He won a championship as a head, uh, as an assistant under Steve Kerr on another man's team. But as a head coach on his own stuff, he had a losing record, a real bad losing record as a head coach. Do you think this guy can win you a championship? I'm just I, I'm just I, answer the question. Put it in the comment section. We'll go over it. But anyway, that's my take on. It. I think the Pelicans because of pride. Ultimately, it's going to get this game. That's just my take on it. I think ultimately the Pelicans will win this game because of pride. You can't let another team come here and smash you down in your building. Sooner or later, somebody got to do something, right? So I think the Pelicans will respond. Now, after that, it's anybody's guess. They can get one and then start losing. It's just they, it's just they're just the model of inconsistency right now. And I don't know, man. It's just sad, man. It's too. It's so many things going wrong habitually, and then the 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 cold part about it is, you look at the statistics about the Pelicans. Even the statistics tell you this. This don't make no sense. That this team should be as bad as what they are record wise and so inconsistent. The Pelicans have five, at least five players, that's in double digits. 
and four of which are starters. You go over and look at the top scores on the Pelicans team. Andy Davis leads the team in scoring, of course. He averaging 27 points flat a game. Behind him is Drew Holiday with 19 points a game, right? Then actually, Nikolai, then, you're right, it's Drew Holiday. Then Nico Miritich is averaging, according to these statistics, about 19 points a game. So you got Andy Davis at 27, Drew at almost 20 with 19.7, Nico Miritich at 19.4, Julius Randle behind them averaging about 18 points a game and then each one more almost 16 points a game so that gives you five guys one two three four five five guys four of which are starters one bench guy giving you over 15 points a game and your team is still 10 and 11 and on the four game losing streak make sense of that and I'll tell you why. You don't even have to think that hard. Let me tell you why that's like that. Why they're so bad. 10 and 11 based on those great statistics I told you. Because they're not playing as a team. He's not playing the entire depth of his bench. He can go deeper to that bench because he got talent there. And that bench can produce more points. If you have to take Etwan Moore and put him on the bench with, Nico, with uh, Julius Randle and move another guy into the starting lineup just to balance the scoring between the bench and the starting five to alleviate the pressure off Anthony Davis and Drew Holiday every night having to score a boatload of points just for them to be competitive. That would be a smart thing to do. That's that's called being a head coach, knowing your team. But Elvin Gentry doesn't know these guys. He doesn't trust them. That's why he, it took him two years to, before he started really giving Sheik Diallo minutes. And they don't tell me about, okay, Sheik Diallo gets in the foul trouble. Sheik Diallo didn't play enough to get in the foul trouble. he get two or three fouls, but he knows he gets aggressive and play because he knows he's not going to play a lot of time. Sheik Diallo will get lucky if he even played 10 or 12 minutes a night. He doesn't play. You, you see him tonight, and then you probably won't see him for another three or four games. So, I mean, it's just knowing your team, knowing their skill set, and playing them. Why would, it's just, if I'm Dale Demps, I'm looking at the team, I'm saying, I signed Jaleel Okafor, I talked him here. You know, I brought him in here and I told him, listen, Jaleel, I know you want to, you know, your last move is to go to China. But listen, we the Pelicans, we believe in you. Won't you come here, sign this super cheap deal. We're going to help you resurrect your career. And then Jaleel Okafor doesn't even get one minute against the team that that traded them away, that got rid of them. He could have. He didn't even get no time against the Philadelphia 76ers. I thought that was like a slap in the face. At least played a man five or ten minutes against his former team. Let him show off what he can do. Man didn't play not one iota of a minute. And that's what I'm saying about this guy not knowing his team. Or we gonna pay five and then eight. You can't play him at that pace of play eight guys a night and expect them to keep up with that pace without making having injuries, which is gonna start happening, and turnovers and inconsistent play. It's just not possible. You have to dig into the bench. It's just not deep. It's not deep. For God's sake, please find a real center. Please find a real center. Please find a real center and move Andy Davis back to the four, please. But anyway, that's going to do it for the Pelican Post Game Report tonight. I appreciate y'all chiming in. If you agree with my sentiment, if you disagree with my sentiment, please post your comments below. And, of course, a lot of our stuff. Answer those questions I asked you. Shit, is, is Elvin Gentry the man for the job? Is, where are we going to win a championship with him? Chime in on that. Sit, tell me what you think about that. Tell me what you think about the bench and the fact that it, are we going to get it done with an eight-man ro a rotation? Tell me why he doesn't fr play Frank Jackson, Sheik Diallo, or Jill Okafor. Tell me, tell me, tell me. Answer some of these questions because you guys might have, you, you guys, I know y'all got some answers. So let's get together and let's figure this thing out because I'll tell you what El Gentry won't. But anyway, if you enjoy the show, please go to our Patreon page at www.patreon.com slash the PRO Media Network. You can even join our social media pages. Uh, we are on social media. The link's in the description section below. You can also help the show by going to and buying uh, products and services from our sponsors that help promote the show to keep us going strong as we move forward to get more into our live podcast as well. So from me and the entire crew at the Pelican Post Game Report, thank y'all for listening. Uh, chime in. Let us know what you're thinking. And peace.
What's up, sports world? It's Big Q. Talking at you from the PRO Media Network, letting you know that we're attempting to make things a lot simpler on our listeners and viewers of our mini podcast. So as a result, we're leasing down a lot of our shows to have their own channels for your convenience. Starting soon, shows like Ring King Box, LSU's Tough Tiger Talk, the Pelican Post Game Report will all have their own individual YouTube channels. So thank you for working with us during this process. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for commenting. Thank you for everything. Thank you for your donations and support for our platform as we continue to improve moving forward. Peace. T is your escape. It's your opportunity to create a moment for stillness, for reflection, for yourself. It's your connection to a world of senses, flavors both exotic and familiar, energizing and relaxing. It's your retreat from an increasingly turbulent world. It's the perfect paradox of simplicity and complexity. Teabox.com connects tea to people, uniting the richest flavors of the finest teas with the curious, the cultivated, and the adventurous all over the world. The freshest tea you've ever tasted from crop to cup. There's simply no simpler way to experience the wonderful complexity of tea. Tea box packing up the freshness. Tea thrives on freshness, and so do they. Tea box temperature and humidity control facility ensure that tea is maintained. The teas themselves go into an oblique bags with aluminum layers that protect them from excess moisture. And like with tea box, shopping for fresh, loose leaf tea is easy because you make an informed purchase. You know exactly where your tea is coming from. So for the freshest teas in the world, check out teabox.com. That's right, teabox.com. Check the link in the description section below. There's a reason he's always employee of the month. And why no shirt and no shoes the heat. is no problem. There's a lot of reasons to be a fan, but only NBAstore.com has all the gear. What's up, sports world? This Big Q from the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. Talking to you about the website, theposhlifestyle.com. That's right, poshlifestyle.com. A great website where you can get great products at great prices. They sell organic herbs, vitamins, supplements, water filters for your home, EMF and cell phone radiation protection, healing magnetics, and healing crystals, personal protection devices like cell phones, stun guns, and mace spray, organic deodorants, shampoos, soaps, toothpaste, and more. They also sell 10A grade Brazilian hair. 10A music is available now. All kind of the latest down downloadable mixtapes. So what are you waiting for? Head on over to theposhlifestyle.com. That's the posh lifestyle, life spell with a Y, L Y F E style.com. Put in the sports coma for the 10% discount on your purchase. It's a win-win. So get your mind and body right with the posh lifestyle. Go to newfrog.com for all of your electronic gadget needs. Fast becoming number one online seller of cell phone and accessories, consumer electronics, automobiles and motorcycles, home and garden items, 5D diamond painting crafts, electrical and tool supplies, computer and networking supplies, lights and lighting supplies, sports and travel items, toys and hobby supplies, apparel and accessories, mother and kid items, health and beauty items, and much, much more. Newfrog.com has up to 70% off on some products. And you can check out their weekly promotions for all the best deals. Remember, when thinking online electronics and gadgets, think New Frog, newfrog.com. Check the link in the description section below. In today's world, children are bombarded with negativity on television, online, and at school. Our kids need to have a positive outlook on life and the world around them. I want to share with you a valuable resource you can use to bring positivity into your child's life. It's the new book, 101 Powerful Children Affirmations, a guide to positive child self-image. From author and dad, G.J. Barabino. 
This is a simple guide loaded with wonderful and inspirational affirmations designed to uplift young people's spirits. This positive and powerful children affirmational is chock full and loaded with wonderful inspirational sayings that will lift your child's self-image to whole new levels through the awesome power of spoken word. 101 Powerful Children Affirmations, a guide to positive child self-image from author and dad, G.J. Barabino. Available on Amazon. Order a copy for yourself, your child's teachers, or anyone you know with children. 101 Powerful Children Affirmations, a guide to positive child self-image. Order your copy today. You're listening to the Pelicans Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network for all things Pelicans. Vapor DNA is the absolute premier online vape store offering an interesting leading selection of e-cigarettes, e-liquids, and accessories. Our friendly and knowledgeable customer service team is always ready to provide the best customer service experience to ensure you find what you're looking for. We guarantee our vaping gear shop product to be 100% genuine and the lowest price. We are so confident in our selection and our customer service. We will offer our customers a 45-day refund policy. That's right, a 45-day refund policy. We are proud of this offer for three simple reasons. Quality, selection, and price. And that is the reason you should choose Vapor DNA for all your vaping needs. That's www.vaporDNA.com. Again, that's www.vaporDNA.com. 